Justice. Yo, you are so far in the highest mountain. Justice. The Justice. springs and the fountains. I. Justice on earth. It's what my people want. Overstand. There is a better place to be, yes. Justice on earth. It's what the children want. Rastafara, yeah. I have been the Rastafara, I have Bobo Shanti. Come together with love and one unity. Spread the righteous work all across communities. Teach the ghetto you. Home of Leonard Howell, Stargate Pinnacle. Welcome to Thailand. No? Rastafara. Just self reliance in Sister Odesh, are you actually residing here at Pinnacle? Yes, we've been here for a bit. And how do you like it here so far? It's just the most splendid place, um, place on the face of the earth. Home of Rastafari. Right? This, is, this is the the laboratory, the life laboratory of, uh, of change that the ancestors set forth and accomplished very successfully. So I and I could move forward in this time, in truth. So you are serious about the Rastafari mission, sister? Born Rastafari. That is beautiful. Now, sis, tell us what do you know about um, Leonard Owen? That's a very good question, you know. Some days I ask myself, who is this man? And the more I study Leonard Percival Howell, I find out I don't even know the man. This is one of Jamaica's greatest sons, if not the greatest son, Jamaica. The, I mean, the African diaspora mm -hmm. in Jamaica has ever produced. Okay. I mean, we talk about Dada Garvey, but when you're going into the space where a youth is strongly influenced now by what Dada Garvey have, ha, has, to, has brought yeah. forward, yeah. Yes, yes. in essence, and not only just talked about it, as, as we have a lot of talkers now, mm -hmm. but went forward with that vision, where he put his money to work for him and his people. Yes. All right? So that's a very, very complex man. And people like to say, oh, he wasn't careful with Pinnacle and he didn't register the land. I'm here to tell you, he did register that land. We have a title with his name, Leonard Howell. So a title is actually here. Yeah, man, they have titles. But the people who disenfranchised us and who disenfranchised him. And when I say us, I mean the Howellites. And as, 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 as uh, off of that, the wider Rastafari community at large that were disenfranchised because you have youth walking around the, that are disenfranchised from that time yes. because of the actions yes. that Babylon took. The takeaway, it's not 500, it's 1,500 acres. They wrote it in their papers. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the land access, you would look and see what happened here. Okay. Mr. Howell not only sat here, he sat as an oasis of plenty okay. for our people, somewhere that we could come and actually just let ourselves down. I'm, a lot of us never got to come up here. The very few that work with the bakery and stuff and who tended the animals mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. because the brethren lived over on East Avenue and more towards the other ends of the estate. Oh, okay. So up here now, in this hour, that I and I could come forward to this space is a special a special gift from this man yes, that we okay. call Leonard Howell. I see the youths call him now Sir Leonard Howell, oh, okay. Leonard and, Percival Howell. And you think he's deserving of that title? What? We don't even, I don't think we want a national hero with this. Yes. That's a national hero's time you can get a crusty and, you, and you're just one day. Mm -hmm. This is a man that came and embedded self-reliance. Marcus Garvey started that. In terms he, of the black race. Yes, man. He learned that. And people love to run around and say, oh, we're leaders and they want to lead. I see the problem these days. It's because you can't bring people off the plantation and want to lead them and want them to work yeah. for you. That in itself is a no-no. So the men and women, the ancestors that brought us, the Coromanti and all them from Portland and St. Thomas that brought the world this, I mean, that helps support to bring this. Because you have to remember in the whole crucible that started in Harlem. And this is where Mr. Howell started this movement, in Harlem. Okay, so you think he was very passionate about his vision? Very passionate to move it from New York into Jamaica and stand up. He stood up. He didn't raise a fist at them. He didn't raise nothing at them. 
everything that they did. The ancients talking about a woman slapping him with a slippers three times in his face and he said, that's all you got. Okay. Have a nice day and he left. Okay. You see what I mean? Okay. So went to that point, even turned and, and the that, cheek. That was, that was also, he was also exhibiting humility. He was also very <laughs> Tolerance humble. because yeah. you can't have peace with, with war and anger. People say Mr. Howell never even swore. So when I hear people swear and all that stuff. But the more you learn about this great king, I want to tell you something. Last week it was a revelation because the word Howell. Howell. Yes. There's no trace of it where it came from on earth, but from one spot. Okay. And I'll just leave you with this. Go and look at the great sphinx in the Giza Plateau. Yes, yes, yes. And then start studying who is this man, Leonard Howell. Because okay. a lot of us think in terms of Imhotep, Imhotep, yes. the great, well, the, the doctor, the yes. healer, the planner, the builder. But no, this is the man that writes the Giza pyramids in now. The, the dreadful one, yes. with the half of a face of a lion yes. and the half face of a man. And you go look at the whole lion and everything and you see Leonard Howell. And you see how he sit there perched. And then get the Arabic. Ask the Arabs, how do you say what this is? And they tell you, it's Howell. So we are this side in Jamaica, the British West Indies, as Mr. Howell call it. We're making all kind of all kind of moves, like crabs in a 500-acre basket. Yes. And we can't stand and defend. Well, they dig up our ancestors, they do all this. It's a cursed shame, you know. It's a cursed shame. Even as we speak, the movement is in turmoil. Yes. And everybody's yes. fighting. No one has any credibility, okay, when they bring the police are you go to the government and ask the police to remove the Howellites who brought you this movement yes. and they use some pinnacle. You don't have no credibility. Okay. You lost that credibility. Mm. How you gonna how you gonna put Babylon to eat up the young? Do you think Mr. Howell what? They came and invaded here. Now these people, this one goes to they're not Rasta. You gonna go to the government and ask the beast to invade Howell place in 2014? Who is that person? What do they want? So there's a little bit of what I have to share. But the more you study Leonard Percival Howell, the more questions you have. And our people need to just scrape apart and we need to brush our, ourselves up, open there, start digging the stuff out mm -hmm. and writing. To my mind, and I'm telling you right now, no one has written on Leonard Percival Howell yet. Okay, okay. None. No, man. People come telling me come brushing so. But if you want to come from the interns of this movement to talk about Leonard Howell and where he stands. Yes, because the world needs to know mm. who this great man is. Yes, I, they, they need to know. And I feel the world knows. It's just people in Jamaica don't know. And do you think it, it, it has been suppressed somewhat? It's willful. It's willful suppression. Here they took his land, 1,500 acres. They were able to do it through the Administrator General's office. The tax records are wiped clean. The government could come and show us the tax records. Who paid the taxes from 1941? And it, the taxes were they, they, paid? They're telling us to prove that we paid the taxes. Okay. And where's your title? Right. So how, I'm asking now, how could Richard Lake own Pinnacle where Leonard Howell never sold it? Okay. You have a better understanding and um, because a lot of people are not aware of what is really happening but getting yeah. it from the people yeah. who are here, you know, sharing it with the world. And you've got a lot of our black people that stood against their own black people. These are older people just like now. And then now you have a kind of reverse discrimination where the long-haired naughty man looking at the man we are calling the comb through from Rasta. Well, bring them Rasta and telling them, you don't belong, you don't belong, you eat this, you eat this, are you, are you not Rasta? Who are these people again? Okay. That second time I ask who are these people, I think we need to start looking at who is a modern day dreadlock man. Yes, 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 you see, yes, because yes. A dre dreadlocks is just one of the things that there is. It doesn't define you yes. as a person. Beautiful. Because, let me tell you, they got homosexuals and the locks. So if there's locks, there's a dread man. I waiting for the first day they declare and then I can trim right from that step. Cause that don't hold me. And I want to show the rest of them what I mean. Mm -hmm.
You see? Give me back my big afro so I could walk around here with a red, gold and green wrap or something like, and tie it up. Real militant. Because yeah, this ain't serving me nothing. Yeah, but, but in terms of the cohesiveness of our race, of the black people, you are hard for it. Because I'm listening to what you are saying and you are very passionate and you are very serious about it. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I woke up. I was born in Guyana this time. Yeah? British Guyana. I was born before when it was under British rule, all these places. And I could wake up in the 60s as a young child to the British invading Guyana. And I saw men and women from Jamaica, from Barbados, from Trinidad, from all over, Cuba, all over. I didn't ask them who they was. I know they're my people. They look like me. And they jump right in there and they start fighting alongside my brothers and sisters in Guyana. And we never asked nothing. You see? Because we knew we were always looking for families. So when it gets to this point in this time and space, that I got to come up. This is just giving back. Giving okay. back what was given. I know of myself. When you're talking about an African from this part of the world, their greatness, and what I'm not marveling at, I'm amazed at what I'm seeing. The willful ignorance of a people and destruction. Okay. Because how could we have had all these high test scores, brilliant people coming off of slavery, and now we got some pack of dunces and murderers? You see? So I look at this, they didn't want Mr. Howell to be around their children because he was going to make them a raster.